Ron, there's an old statement I've read and heard about people saying in Congress, the banks never lose. Well, I think that's a general statement. I think the big bankers never lose. But I think a little banker right now is losing a lot because a lot of little bankers are getting closed down and the big banks are gobbling them up. I don't think David Rockefeller is going to lose. I don't think he's going to be out selling uh, apples or pushing pencils anytime soon. But a lot of bankers uh, that are being wiped out at the state level uh, are losing. But the big banking power structure seems to have control because they're on the inside and they have control of money and they know what policy is going to be down the road. Can you specify this structure This you're talking about, this power structure? Well, the power structure basically is made up of a lot of very powerful business and uh, corporate leaders uh, in the country. And uh, it, uh, in particular, they have formed their organizations. They've been around for a good while and uh, they don't even hide it anymore. You know, the Trilaterals Committee Commission, as well as the Council of Foreign Relations. No matter what, uh, which president, which party is in power, uh, they will appoint to the major offices uh, members of these two committees. And uh, they're always, they, they always have control of the Federal Reserve System. So the Wall Streeters, the big bankers, have inside information as far as what is happening and what's going on. And uh, control over money is pretty significant because if you can control money, you're really controlling one half of every single transaction. So that is a tremendous amount of power. But uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have any independence. Uh, they say the Federal Reserve is independent, but that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, uh, the protection that the founders gave us to try to keep us from this happening uh, never authorized a central bank, and they were very strict in the writing of the Constitution to limit the power of Congress to only to the minting of gold coins, to allowing only gold and silver to be legal tender, and prohibiting the printing of paper money. All those things we have failed to follow. And that's why we have a central bank with a paper money system and a lot of inflation, high interest rates, and a very, very shaky economy. So I would say that if we would have followed the advice of the Founding Fathers and not allowed this power structure, this group of elitist bankers and industrialists to get control not only of the banking system and the monetary system, but really our foreign policy and our government. I wrote a little speech and gave a speech right before I left Congress, and I said I don't think the members of Congress uh, really know how little effect they have in controlling things. Really, this. Uh, the, and that means that the Congress itself doesn't have much control. The people doesn't have much. To, they don't have much to say about it either. The control of overall policy is really in the hands of a very small number of people who control all the administrations, all the appointments to cabinets, and certainly all the appointments to the Federal Reserve. Well, that shows we have a single-party political system in the United States. Just maybe split in two a little bit, but there's it's really a, no difference. It's a single party, and if you look at the obstacles put in our way as libertarians to get on, on ballots, it's, it's an outrage because we have to spend uh, more than a third of our energies and our monies just to apply to get on, on state ballots, and, uh, and this uh, distracts us. Some states it's almost impossible to get on. They say, and I have not personally investigated every law around the world, but they say that we are one of the toughest countries in the world to get a new party system. And the American people have been conditioned that it's great to have two parties. We don't want to be like Italy where there's all these choices. We want to limit our choices. It's easier that way. And we don't want to be like the Soviet Union where there's only one party. Yeah, that's right. So they have two. But if policies never change, what's the difference? So we do have one party. And if policies never change, you know, if, if there would have been a difference, uh, maybe under the Republicans we would have had a uh, closer to a balanced budget, but the deficits were worse with the Republicans. But foreign policy, the policy of intervention, subsidizing communism, and uh, helping rich allies, that always continues Republicans or Democrats. Uh, it was the same policy, Republican or Democrat, that supported uh, wars like Korea and Vietnam and the CIA operations and the FBI. All these operations are endorsed by the, by the other two parties. But uh, and that, for that reason, what do they do? They get control of funding as well. The other two parties get over a hundred million dollars handed to them. You know, not too long ago we had the two conventions on national television, Republican and Democratic convention. 
And the American people didn't watch. They should have. They paid for it. They paid $9 million. We as citizens were forced to pay to run those conventions, $9 million apiece. And therefore, they get all this exposure, making it, again, very difficult for an option, a third option, to be heard. It's uh, very hard to get our message out. Uh, but the control is there, whether it's in the political control or the banking control or in government policy control in the administrations.